means you're getting all tails. If you get all of something, that means every time you proceed, uh, you re repeat the procedure, you're getting that same outcome, right? That translates to a tail, and then a tail, and then a tail, for however many flips of the coin that you have. Now, do you have your understanding? Okay. If you have T and T and, not like ACDC symbol, T and T. <laughs> over, over it. If you have T and T and T, and they're all independent, then what this comes down to is simply one minus, what's the probability of a tail and a tail and a tail? Well, you tell me this. Probability of a tail and a tail and a tail, if they're all independent, what's the probability of flipping your first tail? Flipping a coin, right? One out of, there's only two sides. This probability is half for the first tail, right? Times, multiplication rule, that's the and. How, what's the probability of getting the second tail? Does it change? That means they're independent. What's probably in the third tail? Okay. Are you still with me here, folks? Do you see where the one halves are coming from? Remember this. I can do the extra step here if you if you really want. This is the probability of t times the probability of a tail times the probability of a tail, which is what you're doing. They just all happen to be independent, and you don't need the the conditional probability on that because it doesn't change. Okay, so what is one half times one half times one half? How much is one times one eighth? Yes. Anybody? Did we get the same thing? Did the probability come up the same? Did I lose you? No. Lost some people. You can tell. See, some of you are just tired from the weekend. Some of you are like, I don't know what's going on. No idea. Here's what's going on. This way made sense to you because we did it directly. We listed every possible outcome. We counted up the ones that had at least one head. Here we're doing the backdoor version of this. We're saying, I want to find the probability of getting all tails. Now you'll notice, when we looked at the probability of getting all tails or a tail and a tail and a tail, did we even look at your sample space? Not one bit. What we did is the multiplication rule and said, oh, I know the probability of getting all tails or tail and tail and tail. You should know that probability. That's the probability of getting a one on a die and then a two on a die and then a three on a die and then a four on a die like we did on the board. It's one six times one six times one six for the dice. Here it's one half probability of getting a tail. If you flip the coin, what's the probability you're going to get a tail? That's classical probability, right? You need one half. What's the probability you're going to get your next tail? One half. What's the probability you need your next tail? So if you have the multiplication rule, because you're saying I want this event and then this event and then this event, which we know we multiply that, right? Multiply that. We're going. Here's one half for the first probability, one half for the second probability, times one half for the third probability. That's giving you the one eighth. Why do we have this one minus up there? Where's that coming from? It's magic. Purely magic. Because I am a magician. Mathogician. <laughs> Where's it from? Compliment. Talking about the compliment. Yeah, that's exactly right. The compliment gave us the one minus. It didn't come out of nowhere, right? It didn't come out of nowhere. We know this is true. Probability of at least one is equal to one minus the probability of none. That's where that came from. So if we work on this part, we can do this directly, well, indirectly, getting our, our same probability. Now you're probably thinking, geez, honestly, Mr. Leonard, this one looks a whole lot easier. Right? Doesn't look a whole lot easier, doesn't it? That way, with the listen and all. But the question is, what would you do in this case? <laughs> right? It's easy when you get three. You can list them out. There's only eight of them. If you had four, there'd be 16 of them. Five, there'd be 32 of them. Six, you'd have 64 of them. Twenty, you'd have two to the second power, or two to the twentieth power. Two to the 20th power, that's an insane amount of listing out. Do you want to do that? Then kind of all the ones that have heads? You're going to be there forever, in eternity, right? You're going to be there for a long, long, long time. Maybe not eternity, but like close. Like eternity minus one, whatever that is. And we're going to be there a long time. You don't want to do that, do you? If you do this directly, 
It's ridiculous. Okay, ridiculous. If you do this indirectly, though, it's pretty easy. Because look what you do. You say, oh, what's the probability of at least this? I don't know what this is. I don't really care. I'll find out later. This one, this wouldn't matter. Right? This is not the same thing anymore. If you do the 20 heads, if you do the 20 heads, probability of at least one head, I'm not even going to go try to do that directly. I'm going to go indirectly because I know the probability of at least one head is 1 minus the probability of no heads because those are complementary events. That's 1 minus the probability of all tails in this situation. That's 1 minus the probability of a tail and a tail and dot, 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 forever, well, like for 20 of them. And then and a tail 20 times. Could you do that pretty easily? Yeah. Sure. What's the probability of getting your first tail? What's the probability of getting your second tail? How many times are you going to do this? 20 times. You take 1 half to the 20th power. That's what 1 half times 1 half 20 times mean. 1 half to the 20th power. What's 2 to the 20th? Someone tell me that. Someone with a calculator tell me that. 2 to the 20th. It's big. How much? 2 to the 20th. 2 to the 20th. Yeah, just tell me 2 to the 20th. Because it's going to be 1 over, because 1, I know, I can do 1 to the 20th. I know that one. It's 1 over Just say the digits, okay? Okay. 1, 0, 4, 8, 5, 7, 6. Like that? Yeah. So guess what? If you would have done this the long way, you know what you'd end up doing? You'd end up going, counting up 1 million, 48,575 items with hits. You don't want to do that. Do you, you want to count a million, million items? We do. If you do one minus that, it's, it's just this number over itself, and you subtract one from it. That's where the five's coming from. That's the probability. It's very close to 100%. Very, 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 very close. It means, I mean, think about that. If you flipped a coin 20 times in a row, is it really going to be very likely that you don't get a tail? I'm sorry, that you, that you don't get at least one head? It's pretty likely you're going to get at least one head, right? If you flip a coin 20 times, pretty likely. How likely? I know exactly. It's right here. Divide that, you'll get a decimal like 0 0.9999, whatever that happens to be. What is that decimal, by the way? Put that in for yeah. What'd you get? What'd you get? Nine 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 nine. Forever? Oh. Um There's six nines and then zero four six. Okay, pretty close to hundred percent probability, right? That's pretty that's pretty darn certain that you're gonna get at least at least uh, one head. Now, uh, one more thing to point out to you, if you did not read this in your book, which you were supposed to read this in your book, uh, rare and usual for probabilities. If you have less than a 0.05% chance, that would be called a rare occurrence. So is this rare? Well, it's pretty darn usual that you're going to get at least one head. I mean, this is almost 100% chance you're going to get that. If your probability was point 0, 0.05 or less, then the probability would be considered unusual. How many letters should that write? Do you feel okay on this example? Do you have any questions on that example? You're so quiet today. Do you see why we might want to learn this way as opposed to hammering straight at it? If we hammer straight at it, yeah, you'd be able to do it for like flipping it three times or four times, but as soon as you get to like five times and you got 32 different possibilities, that's just annoying to write out. You don't want to have to do that. So this probably is a better way to do a lot of these at least one type of scenarios. Guys, are you with me today? Yes. Okay. Antonio, you had a question. You actually covered it. I did? Yeah. Like I know what I'm doing? Exactly. Mm. I love that. Okay, seriously though, any other questions before we move on? 
All right, I'm just going to tell you something. We're not going to really use this a whole lot. Um, it has to go back to, to prob uh, conditional probability. What was your question, just to, out of curiosity? Oh, uh, I was going to say, I, I pretty much saw that same thing. Oh, the 20? Exactly. Yeah. I was like, so we just, uh, well, I was thinking more with the eye. So I was like, so if we're going for like 1 out of 6, you know, we just go 1 out of 6 and then take it to like 100 power. Sure. Yeah, that's exactly right. So I could change, I mean, this doesn't have to be flipping a coin, right? This could be rolling a die. So what's the probability of getting at least 1 or higher? I'm sorry, that, that would be 100%. Uh, <laughs> at least 2 or higher. The, the complement of that would be 1. You could say, well, that's... Instead of doing, I can get a, a two or a three or a four or five or six on 20 wheels of die, that'd be very hard to do that. You say, okay, then the complement of that is getting a one every single time for 20 wheels or whatever. So you can, you can do it that way as well. <coughs> good question. Of course it was good. I answered it right. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> just joking. You know, I, I feign this, this kind of copiness. I'm just joking. Conditional probability, folks, um, what does it mean when I say this? What's it mean? That A already happened. That's right. Probability that B is going to happen given that A already happened. I just need to tell you that sometimes if you're not able to calculate this directly, you can do it with a formula. If you know the probability of A, and you know the probability of A and B, which it's kind of rare that you know this one without this one, but if you know those two things, that formula is, is valid. Now, of course, this is just kind of a, this should be trivial if you know anything about algebra, because this is the formula for This is the formula for the probability of A and B when it's A and then B occurring for two successive events. You'd have probability of A times the probability of B given A. Isn't that what I told you a long time ago? Yes, no? So if you just divide both sides by probability of A, you see that you get that one back, right? You get that. So if you know anything about algebra and you divide everything by probability of A, you end up getting that formula anyway. So it's just a direct corollary from this thing. Uh, we're not going to do a whole lot with that. I just need to tell you that it is possible to find a conditional probability if you know these other two probabilities already. <clears throat> Let's look at one quick example of one way we can kind of see this scenario in a table, and then we'll call it good for this section. We'll go back to our our guilty table. Is this 11 or 9? I forgot. Do you remember? What's the probability of finding someone who's 